for those of you that uh, know the company, know us, um, you'll know that we've been around for a while. We've, we've been doing this since 2013. We are a high-grade uranium exploration and early-stage development company. It's Athabasca Basin-centric. We now have 14 projects uh, totaling almost a million acres, one of the largest land packages massed by any company in the region. We've continued to add to that. As you saw in December, for those of you following the news, we, we increased by about 30, 35 percent with some new properties on the north end of the basin. Uh, what we've done and what we've focused on really in the last uh, four or five years in particular is a dual prong strategy. So first and foremost, we are a high grade exploration discovery story. You are getting exposure to high grade mineralization and potential discoveries in the Athabasca Basin. Everyone knows the success that the next gens, that the fissions, that the denizens, that the Hathors have had. Uh, much like our peers, we are out there uh, consistently drilling, advancing our core projects, looking for that next big basin deposit. But we also act as a prospect generator. And this part of the business, since we were all last here two, two and a half years ago, has grown quite a bit. We've announced three new option partners in the last year and a half, and that's coupled with our two joint venture partners in Arano uh, and in Azincourt. So I'll get uh, into that as we work our way through the presentation here. Disclaimer, forward-looking statements, please do read that on your own time. Investment highlights people, timing, and projects. So people, we have our management team, our technical team with focused expertise in the Athabasca Basin. We have our board, which is a good mix of people with managerial, capital markets, and geological experience. Timing with the uranium market. Needless to say, we're, we're very bullish on the market. We, we truly believe we are in the early innings of what will be a sustained bull market in this commodity. This metal has a very unique set of underlying fundamentals and market dynamics. At $50 a pound, there's still a long way to go, I think, a lot of runway for this metal to trade much higher and for companies like Sky Harbor and its shareholders to benefit from that. And then the projects. Uh, we'll wrap up the presentation with the projects, as I, I mentioned earlier, a very large land package consisting of projects from earlier stage uh, exports exploration properties right through to more advanced stage exploration assets with resources and deposits on them. The two in particular that we're focused on this year, Moore Lake, our flagship project, which is where we're uh, just wrapping up a 2,500 meter drill program, uh, and our South Falcon Point project, which is host to the Fraser Lakes Zone B deposit. So just to re-familiarize everyone with the team, again, it's been a few years uh, since we've been here. So I've been running the company since 2013 as the president and CEO. Uh, we, My chairman and I had built and sold a gold company called Bayfield Ventures. Uh, we sold that and then we came in and started Sky Harbor Resources, seeing an opportunity in this sector to build a company. Dave Cates is the president and CEO of Denison Mines. Uh, Denison's one of our largest corporate shareholders. Very close working relationship with Dave and his team at Denison a very important part of our story. Joe Gallucci joined us a couple years ago, brings additional uh, bench strength and capital markets experience. Uh, he's now the head investment banker at Laurentian Bank in Montreal. Our geological team led by Dave Biard. Dave's a 40-year veteran in the Athabasca Basin. He's him and his geological teams have been credited with several discoveries. And before this, he was a senior role at Cameco and at JNR. Christine McKechnie, uh, who's now our senior project geologist, has worked with Dave and worked with us now for several years years. Uh, she has uh, uh, done a fantastic job coming in in the role she's in now, really oversees all of the field work and actually wrote her award-winning thesis on one of our deposits, the Fraser Lakes Zone B deposit. And then just wrapping up, you'll see Paul Matizic as an advisor, really needs no introduction. Built and sold several companies over the last six years, including Energy Metals, which he sold to Uranium One for almost $2 billion. Andrew Rimcharan, and I, I do uh, encourage people to come by the booth and meet Andrew. He's the re most recent addition to the team, Senior VP of uh, Corporate Development. Uh, Andrew was previously with Sprott and SRK. Uh, at SRK, he worked with several Uranium companies in the mid-2000s, uh, and uh, he held a senior role as corporate development manager at I Am Gold for a number of years. So 20 year mining executive, very pleased to have him join our team as an officer and senior VP of Corp Dev. 
Uh, capital structure, straightforward, 133 million shares issued in outstanding. You'll see, uh, obviously, there's been volatility in the market. We've seen that across the board. I think this presents one of the best value propositions this company has ever offered investors, given what we have going on this year and over the next several years, trading around a 50 to $55 million valuation, well-funded with uh, $6.5 million in the Treasury. That's in cash and in equity holdings in some other companies. And you'll see notable and strategic shareholders, uh, management and insiders. We've consistently been purchasing shares. See a little financing we did in, in uh, December, which uh, the lead order was Dave and a few of us that came in uh, and added to our positions. Dennis and Mines, as I mentioned. And more recently, we've been included now in both of the uranium ETFs, the URA and now the new Sprott URNM. Uh, so we've seen quite a bit of liquidity and volume uh, pick up over the last year as a result. And uh, a lot of you are probably familiar with some of the institutional shareholders that are well known in this sector, uh, shareholders of Sky Harbor here, uh, as you'll see. So I won't spend a lot of time. We've got a few slides uh, on this. Happy to discuss this more at the booth, but uh, I'm sure a lot of you, if you're here at these presentations, needless to say, you're a uranium bull, I would assume. Uranium as the fuel for nuclear energy. Um, it, it, nuclear energy really is at the nexus of two major macro trends, one being clean energy and the other going hand in hand with that electrification. We're seeing increased demand in electricity, but we need to provide and generate that electricity through clean means. And really, uranium and the nuclear industry is, is at the perfect, it's at the crossroads of both of those major trends. Uh, it provides nuclear energy, provides the, it's the only source of baseload clean, uh, affordable and scalable, and, and actually, I think more importantly now over the last year, reliable uh, electricity generation. We've seen here, uh, when we look at the supply-demand fundamentals for this metal, as I mentioned earlier, I really do think it's uh, there's some of the most compelling supply-demand fundamentals that are out there. We've got 190 to 195 million pounds of expected demand this year in the backdrop of only about 140 million pounds of primary mine supply. So major supply-side deficit looming in this commodity, and we've seen that work its way into the market. We've seen, obviously, the price of the commodity start to move in the right direction over the last year and a half, but again, at 50 to $55 a pound, there's still a long way to go. We've also seen at the bottom here a new contracting cycle that really has started. We saw with Cameco's first financials earlier in the year, announcement of 40 million pounds contracted in January alone. So for those of you that know this sector, that have seen the cycles, the, the new procurement or contracting cycles are usually what are the key drivers for this metal price. And we're just entering a new one here, uh, as you'll see with that chart at the bottom. Uh, one note or two notes on this slide here, China. So China, as we know, really is at the forefront of growth uh, for this metal, demand for this metal, 150 reactors planned over the next 15 years. More nuclear uh, capacity coming on the grid in China alone than has come on the grid globally in the last 35 years. Uh, more recently, we've seen in the US uh, a lot of talk right now about in, uh, bans on Russian imports of uranium and nuclear fuel cycle products. I think that'll further restrict uh, the market that will lead to, I think, premium valuations for projects in North America and Australia. I think that's the next shoe to drop. Uh, but, but bottom line is demand is growing fairly consistently at 2 to 3% a year. I think SMRs in North America will just continue to add to that going forward. Uh, and the supply side has been hit hard. We, we simply aren't producing enough uranium to meet that growing demand. More recently here, you got uh, some of the financial entities that have come in, obviously Sprott, as we know, that have sequestered almost 60 million pounds of material. So it's not just the utilities buying, it's not just other market participants, it's the financial entities like Sprott and Yellowcake that are effectively sequestering material. So I'll skip ahead to this slide here that just shows our project portfolio. We can work off of this. So as I mentioned earlier, one of the largest land packages, we have two core projects, our flagship project, Moore Lake, you'll see there in the southeast part, the Athabasca Basin, proximal to regional mining uh, infrastructure. This has been the focal point for Sky Harbor over the last four or five years. You'll see we've carried out an extensive amount of drilling there. We're continuing to add pounds at that project, in, in particular in the underlying basement rocks. We've announced just 
just in the last six months, some of our highest grade mineralization discovered in these underlying basement rocks, upwards of 6.8% over two meters. Uh, we're having a lot of success with some of these new exploration techniques and geophysical techniques, geological modeling in refining these targets. We just completed 2,500 meters, as I mentioned. Assays are pending for that. Uh, we'll have some news out on that over the next several months. In addition to uh, Moore Lake, we are planning a, a work program at our South Falcon Point project as well. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, I know I'm running out of time here, so I just want to quickly wrap up with our prospect generator business. $20 million being spent by partner companies, um, five projects that are now optioned and or joint ventured upwards of 10 million in cash payments and between five to $10 million in share issuances. So you get exposure, not just to our projects that we're working at Moore Lake and South Falcon, but to five other projects that are being funded by partner companies. So thank you very much. Uh, again, I, I'm happy to discuss more at our booth 604 and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.